What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back. My name is Josh and today I'm gonna show you guys how you can um, use Google Cloud Bucket Storage to upload images um, from your website to their cloud. Um, this is useful because this will allow users to pick images from their computer and upload them to your website and you won't have to store them on your own computer, on your own hard drive, you can use Google Cloud Storage to do that. Uh, you're going to need a couple things in order for this to work and um, I included some starter files for you. Um, this just includes basic server stuff, um, handlebars and all that stuff. The only thing you will need to do when you download this zip is extract it and um, do npmi and make sure, please make sure you have node.js installed. Um, you will also need a Google account and you will need a project already made. Please make sure you have that made. I'm not gonna go over that in this video because it's pretty straightforward. All right, so I'm gonna do this in the perspective, sorry, that's my phone, that uh, as of how you would probably do it. So let's download the zip and let's open this in File Explorer. All right, and we can extract all, okay. And there we go. So we can open this in bash and then code. This will open it up in VS code. Oops, that's the wrong thing. All right, there we go. Okay, and these are all of your starter files that you need. You will also need MySQL Workbench. Please make sure you have that downloaded as well and set up. Um, so I'm going to do an npm i here. Sorry, that was my keyboard. Okay, wait for this stuff to download. Cool. All right, now um, you will need to make sure that your password for MySQL is put in here, and mine is root root, so that when you run the app, it will it will connect to your MySQL server. All right. Okay. So now the second thing we need to do is we need to create a bucket. So we're gonna go on over to Google Cloud uh, Console, and we're gonna go down here to Storage Browser. All right, and in here, we're going to create a bucket. Pretty straightforward, just give it what you want. I'm just gonna call it GCS bucket example one. Continue. Uh, Multi-region is fine. Standard is fine. Now here's where it gets tricky. Um, you wanna make sure you click fine grained because for the packages that we're using, this is the only way it's going to work. And please choose fine grained first because if you go try to change the settings later on, it might not work. I had a really uh, bad issue with that. I think it has to do, I, we think it's a bug to do with Google where their settings aren't changing even though you're actually changing them. So please click fine grained. Um, Google Managed Key is fine, and then we will create the bucket. Now here we need to make sure that we add this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this, um, just so that you can go over it. I can go over it with you. Let's refresh. Why is it not? Okay. Um, let me just delete this and make another bucket because I think that's conflicting with the bucket I had we made. Let's just delete that. Let's create a new bucket and let's just call this a uh, GCS bucket example two. Okay. Same thing, standard, fine grain, create. All right, and the permissions, okay. All right, so you wanna make sure that we allow all users to see the photos. 
So we need to add new members and it's all users and select the role cloud storage storage object viewer. This will allow anyone who you want or who views your website to view your objects inside of your bucket. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our code. Let's go back to VS code now. And the first thing we need to do is we need to, I think we need to set up a model. Yes, we do. All right. I'm also using SQLize here. So the way we set up our models is um, this way in SQLize. Uh, the only thing we're going to need is two things because I already included a form in the starter files for you guys, and that's this here. So the only thing we're going to need is the um, name. Wait, did I include that? Yeah, name of photo here and the user image. Okay. So function, and we say SQLize data types. All right, and then we can say let image uppercase, make sure it's uppercase, sqlize dot define. We're just defining our table now. Image, and then we can say image underscore name. That'll just be the name of the image that the user puts in. And remember that you can make this form however you want. You can say you can uh, say like, I don't know, say you're selling something and you could make it like the, the item name or item description, stuff like that. And we're gonna allow null, false. Okay. And then image. So this is where the image link will be stored in our database. Because another big advantage to doing this is that all you have to do is reference the um, the link to the image in your database. No, there's no storing any type of images in your database. Let me change this comma. All right, and then we return image. Make sure that's capitalized. All right, so we can go ahead and close this. We don't need this till later. All right. Next thing we need to do is go to API routes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just going to set up our API routes now. All right. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Okay. All right. So let me just go over what we're requiring here. We're requiring our model that make that that's basically saying we're requiring our table. We're requiring Multer, Google Cloud Storage, and UUID so that we can give our photos unique IDs. And I'm just going to make this to the version 1 UUID. ID.v1. Okay. Fine. All right. Now we need to create a new storage. Oh, yeah. I forgot one more thing that we needed. So, um,. We need to navigate on over to our service account. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to delete this one because I don't need this one anymore. All right. All right. So we're going to create another service account and you will need to do this as well. And we're going to give it a name. I'm just going to say GCS bucket example again. And create. Okay. And you need to make sure you give this service account admin on your storage bucket. So go to cloud storage, storage admin, continue. This is you. We don't need any of that because that's optional. Okay. All right. Oh, our member already exists on policy. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So we can go to actions, create key. And you will need to do this as well. So we create a JSON file. 
which includes all of our information for our project, our client email, our private keys, and all of that. So you need to copy this into your project. So I'm just copy that, go here, right click, reveal in file explorer. Uh, make sure you go to the root because we need to put this into our root, but it doesn't really matter because we are going to delete this later on. So now we need to make a .env file. And this is where we're gonna put all of our information that's inside of our JSON. Um, you need to make sure you do this in an environmental variable or environmental uh, file because you want this stuff hidden from the public. You don't want this information getting taken because then they can compromise your bucket and you just do not want that happening. And I'm okay with showing you guys this information because I am deleting this afterwards. Okay. So we can say GCS bucket underscore bucket equals, and that's gonna be the name of your bucket. So we can go back over here, go to storage, go to browser. ECS bucket example two, and we can just copy this right into here. And we gotta say G cloud underscore project. And this is gonna be your project ID that is found right here. Okay. And then we gotta go, we gotta put our client email. So we can say g cloud underscore client underscore email equals, make sure you do not copy the quotes here. Okay. And the last thing we're gonna need is our g cloud private e. Okay. And here it is actually okay to copy the quotes. We just need this entire private key. All right, go ahead and save that. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I won't close that out because we're gonna need this. I can go ahead and delete this. All right, cool. So now we're gonna go back to our API routes and we're gonna set up this file. All right, so first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna create new storage. I'm gonna say const storage is assigned to new storage. And we gotta pass it our project ID. And we say process, because since we're getting this from, I'm just gonna make this bigger because this gets long. I'm just gonna pull this from our environmental uh, file. And we can go ahead and say G Cloud Project. Put that there. All right. Comma credentials. And you know you're going in the right track when it's trying to autofill for you. And we can say client email. And that will be again process dot env dot and this will be G Cloud underscore client underscore email. Okay, and then let's say, and then lastly, we need to give it the private key. Okay, private key and vcloud under private key. Process.env dot private key. All right, perfect. Cool. All right. Now, why is it? Okay. Whoops. All right. Now, the second thing we need to do here is define our multer storage. So, const multer is assigned to multer with a capital M. And this is basically just passing our settings. So, multer dot memory storage. 
And what this is saying is that we're going to store it in memory and then before we store it or before we send it to the cloud. And we want to say limits. File size. And this is going to limit the user from uploading anything that is above 5 megabytes. I know that's a little large, but it's okay. And lastly, we need to make our bucket. So const bucket is assigned to storage dot bucket process dot env dot gcs underscore bucket. Okay. And please make sure that these are the same and uh, same names as these in here all of these process.env variables, okay? All right, so also I'm going to go ahead and go to our render routes. See, we already, I already set up your render route for you. Um, so all you need to do is run the server and we can do that by doing node server.js. Error. Oh, right. I forgot to make the database. So we're going to go to local instances and we're just going to create our database. And we're using SQLize, so that's the only thing you need to do. Already in use. Okay. I need to turn off the server over here. Sorry. All right. So we can navigate over to local host and then boom this is what i have provided with you guys and um this is how you can choose a photo from your computer of course it's not going to work yet because it has no functionality but we will get to that all right so now we are going to go over to our front end we're not going to do anything here because we need to configure our front end first all right and now let's make sure that we link our script. Um, the only thing we need to do is slash assets slash JS slash index dot JS. And this is because in our server dot JS, we have this here and this takes care of the slash public. So whenever, excuse me. Uh, whenever we link anything, whether it's in, uh, whether it's JavaScript, whether it's CSS, anything, the only thing you need to put is slash assets. All right. And also on our main, we need to make sure that we have jQuery here. So let me go ahead and grab jQuery, BDN, and I will include a link of that in the description. Give me one sec. All right, perfect. And make sure you put it at the top because we need jQuery to load before our body loads. All right, perfect. So now that we're in, we got our jQuery, we got our, um, we got our JavaScript linked, we can go ahead and start the on submit for the form. So I'm just gonna do a dollar sign function everything that we do is going to go inside of this function all right and the first thing we need to do is we need to grab our form so we're going to say const form is assigned to dollar sign parentheses and then we grab our form make sure that's what i named it yep and it's an id so you have to put a hashtag if it was a class you got to put a period all right so then we can say form dot on submit function. This accepts the event. Okay. And we want to prevent the default action from happening because we do not want our page to refresh when we hit submit. Also, we need to put a button on our form. 
almost forgot about that. So let's put a button. Type submit. Say submit. There's our button. All right, so now we need to grab our input here. So we can say const image name is assigned to, and we'll just grab it. We'll grab the input by ID. Need to add an ID here. You'll need to add an ID as well. And we can just call it name. That's fine. And hashtag name, and may, and then we say dot value because we will grab the value of the input, and then we say dot trims, and that that will trim any like extra spaces or anything like that. All right. Now we need to say we need to grab the file that is submitted. So we can say const file is assigned to dollar sign. And I think I named it user image. Let's just make sure. I actually don't have an ID, so we'll need an ID for this as well. We'll just call it user image. That's no problem. Okay. And just hashtag user image. The index of zero dot files zero. Okay. And we can confirm that this is working by console logging the file. And a little refresh. Going to submit. And of course, it's not going to work right now. But if you go to the console, boom. This is the image that we just uploaded. OK? All right. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a new form. So we'll say const form data is assigned to new form data, all right? And we will need to append our file. And we can say form data dot append with file in quotes, and then your file variable that is holding your image, OK? And then we can say let user data be assigned to an object. And in this object, we're going to have the image name and then our image name variable. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't actually have to do this, but um, say this were a bigger form, say it had more information needed, then you would put like description and it would be a variable with description and stuff. So that's why I'm doing it, just just so you can see that um, if you add more stuff, you could put it all in one thing, one, one object, and pass it to the form, all right? So since we made an object here, when we append it to the form, we will need to say, and you can name this whatever you want, whatever key value pair you want. I'm just calling it data. We will need to stringify this object. If not, this will not work. OK? And that's stringifying this to pass it to our backend. And you will see that later on. All right? And then we can confirm that this works by console logging form data dot get file. And then console logging form data dot get data. And I can show you that this works because if we do this, boom. Of course, I didn't put anything, so it's an empty string. And we got the file name here. And this is our file that's in our form. OK? All right. So next thing we need to do is our AJAX call. So I can say dollar sign AJAX. And the type of AJAX call we're doing is a post. OK? And the URL that we'll be sending it to, um, I'm just going to call it slash API slash image, oops, image upload. OK? And we'll need to remember that. So when we communicate with our backend, that's what we will have to 
put in our app.get. All right, and the data that we're sending it is our form data. Okay, content type false, and process data false. All right, now we need to do our dot then. Oops, I don't know what that was. And just say results. Oops, I don't know what that was too. And just console log the result and then return false. All right, perfect. Now, this is our everything we need for our front end in order to send all of our form data to our back end. All right. So now we can go to our back end and this is where we're going to retrieve this call. Okay. So this is where things get tricky and you got to stay with me. All right. So we do app.post and that's going to be this URL right here. So we can just copy that, be safe. Okay. And then we need to define how many files we're going to be uploading. So we'll say multer.single file. So we let multer know that we're only uploading a single file and not an array of files. All right. And then rec res arrow function. Okay. All right. So now we need to define our file name. So new const new file name is assigned to, and this is where we want to give the ID to our photos. You don't have to do this, but if you're storing a lot of photos in a large database, sometimes you might have duplicate names of photos and that can confuse you, confuse the database, and we don't want that happening. So we can say UUDV1, and it's a function, so we got to give it that. And say plus with a dash, and plus rec.file.original. Okay. So basically, what this is doing here is it's putting a really long ID in front of our original name of the file. Okay. Now we got to define our blob and our Bob is, is assigned to bucket dot file new file name. Okay. This is basically saying that we're storing it in our bucket with the new file name. Okay. Now we got to define our blob stream and blob stream is assigned to blob dot create write Okay. All right. So now we got to say blob stream dot on error. So this is basically saying if there's an error, then let us know. Okay. Now we got to say blob stream dot on finish okay so this is basically saying when the image is uploaded give it a function okay and this is where we are going to make our um this is where we're going to make our query so that we can send the data to the database as well as our public URL to our bucket, okay? And when we send the data to the database, we're not actually sending an image. We're sending the URL to the image, okay? So we can say const public URL is assigned to, and then I'm going to use backticks here so we can use a template literal. And we're gonna say HTTPS colon slash slash storage dot google apis dot com 
slash process dot env dot dcs bucket because that's the, we're give, that's the name of our bucket in our URL slash blob dot name and that's the name of our image okay cool so this is the URL that's going to be stored in our table and this is also the URL that we will reference when we want to put when we want to display our image images okay so we can say const image details and this is what we're going to um, pass into our table and it's assigned to json.parse rec dot body dot data oops data okay now you may be wondering here where is this coming from remember the object here that we stringified this user data object that we stringified and we gave it the key value pair of data that's where that's coming from okay we need to parse it because it's a string right now and we don't want that okay all right and then we can say image details dot image is assigned to the public URL. Okay. That's basically adding this image to the object and giving it our public URL. Okay. Now we just have a really simple query and we just have to do db dot image dot create image and pass it image details. You don't need to do anything else because it's already an object. And then you can say dot then and give this a function. And then we JSON our image details. Okay. Perfect. Now, the last thing we need to do here is just blob stream dot end rec dot file dot buffer perfect okay and now if we go here do a little up oh i'm gonna need to restart the server because i'm not using nodemon i'm just so used to using nodemon do a little refresh choose the file test submit it went through Check our Hmm, okay, this is Okay, so I think that we need to go back here and look at our permissions. Okay, so this has the wrong account. Um, All right, that should should work. Okay. Oh, it does not have create access. So we got to give this Owner, reader, writer. All right. Okay. Now that should 
hopefully give us access. Try it again. Please. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. And you can see here that um, that console log is our form, our form data. All right. And you can see this worked because it inserted into images, it inserted the ID, image name, image. All right. And then if we go to our bucket, our images are here. See? And this is the link you roll. This is the one I was talking about. All right. So now that we got our images uploading to our database, we have them uploading to our bucket. The only thing we need to do now is actually show them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new file here in our handlebars. And I'm just going to call it images.handlebars. Okay. And I'm just going to copy paste this. You need to see it. You can go ahead and um, pause the video. So I'm saying just each image. So for each image, it's basically like a for loop in handlebars. Um, and make sure you put this data values dot image because we do not have the plugin to make it to where you do not need to put the data values dot image. All right, and then we can go to our uh, render routes and let's just make another render route so we can see our images. So we can say router dot get. I'm just going to call it slash images and rec res. And I'm going to do a simple query, SQLize query. Say db dot image find all dot then image the function and res dot render so render this page our images dot handlebars that's this page right here make sure it's named exactly the way it is and then pass it images image And if we go to our, oh, I will need to restart the server because I do not have Nodemon. Okay, and if we go to slash images, if we did it correctly, this will show I did not do it correctly because I think I need to add an S here. And there we go. There is our images in our bucket. And I can prove it because I can upload another image. Let's just say test again. Um, I guess we can upload uh, two pictures. But when I got diamond and TFT. Okay, and let me make sure that uploaded because I have no. Yep, it went through. See if it's in our bucket. Oh, let me refresh in our bucket. And then we can go to slash images. And there it is. All right, guys. That's it for this video. Um, so today you learned how to basically make a little full stack application for image uploading. Um, we went through our API routes, we went through our render routes, we went through making a model with SQLize, we went through connecting or sending form data, creating a new form and sending that form data to the back end. Um, we went over handlebars and how to display each image with handlebars. Um, if you have any questions in the comments, please let me know. Remember, if this helped you out, please like the video for the YouTube algorithm. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.